that's mob rules. So I had to call up somebody that actually played with Dio. It says A G A C G C. <laughs> That's how it actually goes. Because it, it was Paolo, Paolo. Because I had to call up one of my girlfriends. It's, like, how do you pronounce this? She's like, Paolo, like Paolo, Paolo Vincent. We changed it to Paul Vincent. That's cool. Actually, my stage name was gonna be Michael Vincent, and then it was gonna be Vincent Michael. But then I named my son Vincent Michael. So I just chose Michael D because it's easy. Man, when I was drunk, I go, my name is Michael D. Is that just D or no? It's D E E, Michael D. And it is, damn it! Why? Can't... Oh, that pissed me off when they get it wrong. <laughs> You know, there was a time, okay, Motley Crue was playing at the at the country club. There, This was 1981. They were still doing the Too Fast for Love. It had not come out yet, but they, you know, released that single, and there was those tapes, and uh, they were playing, and see, they would go down to the sound check, and then everybody would, like, Mick would always, cheep bail until the show and then he'd stay and then that's when I'd talk to him and then he'd just he would actually sit for like an hour or two and then he'd you know we'd all leave Mick was very cool he was the coolest out of all of them and Nicky when he was when he had it together he was very cool too he's just like talking to him like if he heard you talking about Kiss or Alice or whatever Bowie anything he would like, yeah, man, you know. So he was very cool, and I remember when Randy died, and he was he he knew Randy. He actually, uh, Nikki Six auditioned for friggin' Motley Crue, and he couldn't tune his own bass. But Randy really liked Nikki. He thought he was cool. He looked friggin' cool, and he thought maybe I could teach this guy, because see. The original bass player in Quiet Riot, you know, got in a fight with Randy, but they were like buddies for life. But the guy pulled a gun on him, and they're like, that's it, he's out of control. And they booted him, and then they were looking for bass players, and they got Rudy, and then it doesn't matter, because he didn't play on that album, and he. Rudy didn't play on anything until Shout, or Shout, if you know. That'd be weird. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Rudy Sarzo bass playing. Uh,. Speak of the Devil is the first album that he played on and he was actually on. First album. I mean, the second, I think, was... Uh, what was it? He went from that and then he went back to Quiet Riot. But he played... Uh, so the first album would be that and then he was on the second Quiet Riot, but he was also on Tribute. The tribute album, Ozzy. And there's an album I just found. I totally forgot about it. Ozzy Live. You guys know what I'm talking about? It's just all Blizzard tour. And see, everybody wants to know where does all this stuff come from. Okay, and I try to tell this story. So everybody, apparently, everybody knows this guy, and they know the story because he's actually telling it, and I can't believe he's actually telling it. But he's a guy I know. 
he lives in Henderson, and he claims that, you know, all this crazy stuff, like he, Randy gave him checks or something and all this stuff. And, you know, he told me that for decades. And I'm like, why? How? Why would he? One, because you never knew him. You never took lessons from him. His daughter took piano lessons from Dolores, but that's it. And he was just one of those guys, you know. And I always wondered, how did he get a copy of a check that was going to rent? Because his girlfriend at the time, who I'm still friends with, told me the story. That he actually... So this is the story for you. So this guy, we'll just call him A. Exhibit A. His girlfriend worked for... he. She worked at uh, Sunset Studio, Sunset Sound... You know, where Motley Crue did their first out, or Shout Out the Devil, Theater of Pain, all that crap. Everybody recorded there. Um, she worked there, and she worked for Jet Records. And the story is that she was uh, Don Arden, Sharon's dad, paid for both the, fir the first two Ozzy albums. He wanted those masters, and Jet Records was folding and selling off everything to CBS, and that was it. Don Arden wanted the Masters to Blizzard and Diary of Madman, and they had three shows, three live Blizzard tour shows mastered in the can. So there was five mastered in the can things that she was supposed to take from here, Hollywood, and fly to London, give them to him, and then go to Chicago, and those two would go to Chicago, Don and her, and meet Randy and Ozzy and all them and hand out these checks. That's the checks. And I always thought, there's such a weird number. He couldn't have been getting paid because I think it's like 750 bucks. Why would he get, he couldn't be making 750 and he wasn't. This is money he was owed. Because there was royalty checks, there was, you know, just checks for playing. All sorts of, you know, crazy checks that comes in for, that came in for Randy that, you know, he got. But once he died, the mom, you know, Dolores, didn't want to accept anything because it felt like blood money to her, which I wish she would have, you know, taken more advantage because Sharon just ate it all up. She took all the royalties for Randy. She took all the royalties for uh, Lee and Bob and the producer, Max Norman, even. She screwed over everybody that was on the first two albums because she held the masters. So this is how. This guy, guy A, called up Sharon and said, Look it, my girlfriend has the masters to Blizzard and Diary and three live shows. They're sitting right here in her living room. I'm in her apartment. If you want them, come get them. So she gets some half-crocked warrant, gets two cops to go with her to scare the girlfriend. What a, what a boyfriend he was, huh? And... She shows up and she's like, I want those. And she's like, no, I am I have to deliver them tomorrow to Don. I'm leaving tonight. She's like, no, you're not giving them to him. They're mine. I have a warrant. And it was a bullcrap warrant. So she was just freaked out. All Sharon took was the master. So she has three live shows and the two first albums. And that's all she needed. So now she was in control. Now she had Ozzy. All she had to do was figure out what was going to happen, if he was going to live, if he, was, if he lived through the tour, you know, whatever. Because she liked Randy, but she was not good looking. That video that they just put out under the graveyard is bullcrap. One, it sounds like shit. The guitar is horrible. I don't care who's playing on it. It still sounds like crap. It's nothing good, and all it is is a dirt ripoff, which is a completely fictional piece of crap anyways about Motley Crue. Ozzy, do you think Ozzy ever looked like that? Look him up. He never looked like that. He always looked like the fat-faced dude with, you know, hippie. He always looked like that. He was a goofball. He was embarrassing with the fringe and Ozzy. Like, he has to have it on his shirt so people know him? Or does he have to have that on his shirt so he knows who he is? It just looks stupid. Ozzy! But anyways, you need to get these live albums because 
So really, those three masters, one was used for tribute, from what I understand, and the other two were, you know, pick and choose songs and put them out for that uh, that box set, 30th Anniversary Blizzard, with the live thing that came with Diary. So it's Diary and then a Diary of a Madman cover, but and live, but it's from the Blizzard tour. Towards the end, where they started switching and putting in more of the uh, diary songs, but it wasn't the diary tour. They had plenty of stuff to work with, like that friggin' thing I put out. That's a quarter inch master. That's a stereo master. They could have easily Matt, took that quarter inch tape because they kept a lot of them, most of them. Sometimes they tape over them, but most of the times they tape every show. You know, put it in a box, lay a boot, gone. And then they'd make cassette copies, you know, and give it to whoever in the band. That's how I got Kalamazoo and the other two ones, which I can't not remember. I think one's Chicago and the other one is uh, somewhere else. I don't know. One of the early shows, though. It's like a January show, a February show, and then I got a March. That's what, that's what I wanted. And that's what I got. But the only one that it's out right now is the Kalamazoo, which is... I can't remember. Is that a February or March? I don't know. I don't know. And if you want one, email me, or not email me, but message me on Facebook. Go to my Facebook page, Michael Douglas Q. 